Hello. Hi, Matt. Nice hey, to thank meet you. you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much for accepting my invitation. I mean, oh. you're one of my favorite artists. Oh, I'm you. just, I mean, all of them are good, but I mean, Cat Collage <laughs> is just so fantastic. Oh, I love it. Thank you. And uh, if uh, the uh, viewers have questions, we can just answer them uh, live. So here we are. Matt yeah. McCarthy, um, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. Very good. Okay. Uh, okay, Matt McCarthy is a collage artist working in North Carolina. He uses domestic felines as the primary subject for his surreal compositions because their unique personalities allow him to explore a variety of human emotions and ideas through a non-human form. The utilization of uh, existing images reinforces the timeless appeal of cats and draws a common thread uh, through a variety, variety of media and reference material. His work has been shown in galleries in the United States and abroad and appeared in numerous publications. I don't doubt anything. It's just... <laughs> uh, okay. Why do you uh, do uh, cat collage? I mean, what, how did you come up with with uh come up with that idea um well i guess for me um you know making art is kind of like a mental health thing if i'm not creating stuff you know i'm unhappy so i'm always trying to keep busy i did a lot of illustration work before and i you know was always making cat pieces i was always drawing cats and putting cats and stuff and then i think you know i was kind of drawn to collage because of how how surreal it could get that you could combine two different things and make such, yeah. a, such a weird different thing. It's very interesting. So really surreal. It's just... Yeah. And then, and then I feel like cats kind of just, you know, they, they weasel their way in there as they do. And then it kind of took off and a lot of people started to like it. And, you know, I was, I was kind of looking for a, a voice to use that wasn't human, you know, that wasn't me. So the cats are kind of a surrogate for me in a lot of my work you know yes, yes. I, I, and, I get to you know in your face kind of but through a cat's face which is a little exactly. more exactly yeah yeah it's, it's i i totally get what you're saying um okay since when have you been doing uh collage art um you know i've been making art all my life and it's kind of been this journey through different mediums and styles so i've been doing collage almost exclusively for maybe two and a half, three years That's at this good. point. Yeah. That's good. Before you did your illustrations uh, uh, that I couldn't find those uh, uh, in your shop. Uh, you have a Etsy. Uh, Matt has a Etsy, a Etsy shop mm -hmm. where he sells stickers and uh, wonderful uh, prints and all that. I yeah. couldn't see it. Do you have illustrations there? I, I didn't see any. I don't. I you know, just are dedicating full time to collage now. Yeah, mainly. Okay. Yeah. As so, an artist, yes. Yeah, and okay. like I have, but I figured it was more, you know, focus on the collage and exactly. And the okay, um, how do you find your define your art style? Uh, uh, I know it's a collage, but uh, how do you define it? Uh, I mean, I would say it's surreal, but yeah, yeah, I think I'd stick with surreal too because yes, you know, I do. I try to do multiple types of collage so you have like the you know the giant cats and then you have like the trippy ones with weird faces and everything and then i have my analog work which is you know not quite as surreal but in the same line so yeah i think that's what i stick with yeah and uh okay your art first impressions what did people say about your art when they first saw those wonderful surreal images yeah um you know i remember as a kid it was a lot of stuff like I drew very small. It was very detailed, stuff like that. Um, I feel like that kind of contributes to the work I do now, too, um, especially digital work. You know, when you can zoom in and get to stuff on a pixel by pixel level, it, I don't know, it, it draws that part of my brain that's like, I need to make this as precise, even if no one sees it, even if no one can tell. It's like, for me, it has to be precise. So it, I know, yeah. Yeah, I guess like detailed and precision would be um, some things. But, I, you know, I think the other thing is humorous. You know, I just, I kind of want to make people laugh and smile. Yeah. And, 
that's, you know, that's really the first response. Yeah, yeah. surprise. And, uh, you know, yeah. wow. Okay, great. Uh, how do you feel when you're creating? Um, I was thinking about this when you sent me those questions. It's, um, I guess it's freeing, but it's also kind of, um, I think of it as, I don't surf, but I think of it as like surfing, where you're just sitting out on the water and you're just waiting for that wave to come. And then sometimes it doesn't come. Uh -huh. And then sometimes it does. And then when it comes, you got to like, you got to be there. But I feel like. Exactly. Freaking, yeah. But you have to put yourself in that position to kind of like, to see the wave coming. And then when it does, you know, you might crank out some pieces or do, do a lot of work at one time. Yes. Uh, I totally, re I mean, I agree with that. Um, I once uh, spoke to an artist mm -hmm. and uh, he was asking me, why haven't, I mean, why have you stopped uh, painting? I mean, because, you know, we have a while that sometimes we just don't yeah. feel like doing it. But uh, I said to him, I lost my muse. And yeah. uh, he said, well, the only, the only way to find her is to st stay where you, uh, like you were saying that you have to wait for that wave, but you have to be there. Exactly. So he said, you have to be at your art studio mm -hmm. and start organizing your paints, uh, your canvases, everything that's related to what you do. And, and then the muse will get to you. It's not like, yeah. okay, I'm standing here and looking at the sky and I cannot find my music. You have to be ready so when that wave hits, you're mm -hmm. surfing on it. So that's yeah. exactly uh, my, my, my description. It would be exactly that. Have to yeah. be there to find it. Exactly. That's good. Okay, what would you change about the art world? Um, I guess there's you know through the process of doing it it's it's hard especially like the fine art world you know as i don't know i whatever fine fine art is kind of labeled as it's like getting into museums and stuff like that can be very um demoralizing sometimes you know it's that everything's so subjective mm -hmm. the people like you know putting stuff stuff like that it's up to personal taste so I, you know, I would say like the gatekeeperiness of it. I understand why it's there. But the thing of, of, you know, people are going to create, you're going to find your audience, but not getting like demoralized by, you know, this doesn't hit with this. Exactly. Person. Fine. Yeah. Find it's someone. fine. Fine. Yeah. But it takes time to, to understand that, yeah. that uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, maybe I won't get to a, a museum, an art museum mm -hmm. because, well, for because of many elements that you're saying, it's yeah. just subjective. It's subjective to. It's not really talent, and that's yeah. why it's demoralizing. It's just like yeah. frustrating. It's just like so many artists there that have talent, and then you you have a something that doesn't make sense, and people just go crazy yeah. about it. And uh, I know, I know, I understand that. Is is yeah. That's that's what is happening, but understanding that sometimes we're not in that particular museum is not that we are not talented. Yeah, and it's like impossible when you're comparing yourself to others because there's such a wide variety. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Instead of of uh, I mean, what I do is uh, I don't compare uh, my art with others. I just try to learn mm -hmm. from others. It's just like what makes that particular piece. Yeah you know, stay, you know, like get to that museum or something. It's just like, yeah. there's something more behind it. Uh, exactly. So like there, there's room enough for all of us, you know, it's just like you find your little niche, you know, you find your people and uh -huh. you know, we can always, yeah. there should, doesn't have to be competition. I mean, exactly. It, yeah. It doesn't, especially when you uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, create art that's like uh with one element mm -hmm. uh, it's not like you're painting mountains or you're just uh, uh you know it's, it's not a wide mm -hmm. uh, uh of, of um a huge quantity of, of things different things but you're yeah. crea creating uh, art with cats and that mm -hmm. that could be limited as well yeah. because yeah. But, but that's what you want to do it's just like 
yeah. me, I, I would I would uh, say so uh, for or for my art. It's oh, like okay. when when you start, it's just like why cats? I mean, why not? <laughs> Exactly. I mean, they're they're just beautiful creatures. It's yeah. just like so much art around them. Well, and I think like you would you would say from from your own work that you know the more you do it, you find your style, you find your aesthetic. Like, I, I can instantly pick out you know your work just scrolling through my feed because it because it's you. Like I know. Yeah. When it's I just like it takes time to get there, but so once you do it, yeah, eventually it's just like I mean. It's, it's very surprising because I get like uh, many compliments on my art and it's just like, oh, it's, it's, they're, they're fine. They're, they're, I mean, cool art, but it's not like, <clears throat> I feel like I got to a point, you know, like very famous artists. It's not, uh, I mean, people uh, get more of, uh, of an emotion, I guess, uh, from our art than, mm. than, wow, that's a splendid or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I guess so. Uh, okay, how has technology uh, impacted your in your art? Oh, I mean, it's invaluable to me. Totally. You know, I love um, I love doing analog collage too because it's it's fun to open up a book. It's fun to there's a there's magic in that of finding things that go together and cutting them out and gluing them. But the majority of my work wouldn't be possible without technology, without Photoshop, without, you know, a drawing tablet. And then also, you know, social media, like being able to, to get your work out there, to find your people, to share with them and to learn from like other people is just, exactly. you know, it's, it's, especially as an artist, you know, I feel like you can get insulated in your little bubble. You know, you're in your studio, you're working maybe long hours at night. And then it's like the social media, the technology kind of opens you up to seeing other people's workspaces and getting more, more uh, stimuli, you know, when you're kind exactly. of. Exactly. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Just a presence. It, it is. Mm -hmm. It is very good. Uh, have you encountered any barriers or obstacles during your career as an artist? Um. I mean, I guess uh, maybe because it's it's cutting. I cannot. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. It's well, just like the, no. Of this, no. <laughs> it's just like in on and off. Oh no! I can hear you fine. Let me make sure this is all. Is that better? Yep. Okay. I feel like because of maybe the subject matter, I get um, you know, sometimes I'll get comments that might not be like dismissive in any way but can feel that way mm -hmm. so like you know it's like your your silly art or like your cute art you know and it's like <laughs> cute is, is like, <laughs> it's to me you know but yeah. you know I, yeah I think that's part, of the, part of the whole thing yeah, yeah and sometimes like cute is not exactly what we uh, uh, conceive yeah. as cute. It's just something that someone said, and that's it. I mean, it's just like why cute? It's just like oh, I'm not. I uh, it wasn't meant to be cute. Yeah, exactly. but I feel <laughs> like once you put it out there, it's like yeah, interpret it any way they want. That's and fine. it's a it's a compliment. I mean, yeah, okay, I feel something. Yeah. Yep. Uh, media or technique? Like uh, you said, you used Photoshop. Yeah, I use Photoshop. I use a drawing tablet. Um, it, you know, it's so much easier than like a mouse or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I scan a lot of public domain image websites. You know, mm -hmm. I have a lot of paper material for analog collage. Yeah, I was going to ask you, where do you get your cats? Yeah. It's like, you, you have used yours, I believe. But uh... I've used a couple times I've used ours. Um, and then, yeah, I have a bunch of like vintage cat manuals, like cat care manuals and cat photo books. And um, I, I have a lot of friends who will send me, you know, piles of cat pictures, which is great. But then, yeah, like the public domain websites like Pixabay and Pexels and Unsplash, you know, where it's like free to use. Other photographers have, you know, photographers have put stuff out there in the public domain for people to use. So. That's that's how we get a lot of the ones for the digital work, but I also have a nice scanner, so I'll scan uh, books and stuff and cut them out digitally from there. 
great. That's, you know, great. Yeah. That's perfect. Uh, I'm going to send you my, my cats because it's, you, you may use them whenever. It's just okay. like, sometimes they have like these poses that are just like, <laughs> did, did this break? I mean, where are the instructions to put them together? Yeah. <laughs> They're like. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of cats, right? I do, I do. How many uh, cats? Um, well, uh, uh, seven. Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's great. Well, I used to have more. The thing yeah. is that um, I, I mean, when I lived in Caracas, Venezuela, mm -hmm. uh, fostering is not easy, and uh, because you don't, you cannot uh, place them for adoption that easily. Uh, oh. So when we rescued some cats, our cats were like welcoming them and just playing with them and, and they cuddled. So basically what I keep on saying is that my cats have cats of their own. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I mean, I have four and then the other three are like from, you know, cats of my other cats. So yeah. <laughs> that's basically. It it takes it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what music or podcasts do you listen to while painting? I know you, you have great podcast recommendations. Oh, okay. Um, so we, I share, a, I share a video with my wife and who's a writer. And so we listen to a lot of, um, we listen to a lot of classical um, music, um, like a lot of Bach is kind of our go. Bach uh, is great for, for stunning painting. It's just crazy. Yeah, everything. It like stimulates the mind, but it's also, you know, it can fade the background and kind of drown out other stuff. Um, we like, we started to get into like ambient music. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, that kind of stuff. But then we mm -hmm. also listen to often um, old time, like radio. Oh, uh, amazing. Radio shows, like we like suspense and um, I can't, Inner Sanctum is I, I, I listen to that one, old time radio yeah. Uh, horror yeah, I stories. Love Those are great. Cause they're, I mean, they're, they're made, they're the original podcast, I guess. You know, they're made exactly. to the story without even having... even you listen to the uh, to the uh, advertising. It's just like yeah. smoking and all yeah. these crazy things that you know yeah. times have <laughs> changed. Yeah. And uh, what other uh, mysterious, uh, I mean, mystery podcast do you recommend? Because I know you recommended me like another one or or YouTube oh, story. We... It was a YouTube story, maybe. Oh. Uh huh. Yeah, there's a lot of like random. Um... And horror stories and on YouTube. Yeah, that'll take like like Reddit, no sleep, and narrate them. I like those. And um, there's a great one called um, Anything Ghost. It's user submitted ghost stories. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like the vast majority of them are, you know, that's good. Just making up stuff, but they're fun, you know. And they're fun. I'm, yes, I'm. Yeah. I'm just. I'm creating a list of of uh, of uh, my artists' recommendations. Because oh, that's, uh, that's pretty cool for people to, to you know, to uh, know what we listen to. Uh, yeah. uh, so I'm creating that. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, has your art changed over time? Have you noticed uh, uh, some changes or you do? Yeah, I mean, I think it, for me, it's kind of evolved with me. You know, I think there's there's something to there's there's something to having a good balance of like rigidity and like I work within these confines and that helps me get the work that I'm doing now done but then also being open to um a variety of different media and um styles and stuff I feel like that was um kind of important moving into the collage stuff where I'm like I don't know about this I'm new to it I don't know what I'm doing um, there were plenty of artists I followed online that I liked, but I was, how can I kind of learn from what they're doing and modify that into my own stuff? So I think being flexible and open to, to change your art, just, just kind of, I mean, to go back to that wave, like going with the flow, you know, just, just waiting to see what. And flow. That's, yeah, of course. Uh, it is. Uh, what work do you most enjoy doing? I guess. Of course, collage, uh, but uh, I mean, uh, it would be 
like um, maybe here we can see what work you most enjoying doing. It could be like uh, maybe using like you say old theaters and vintage mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. What would you? I mean, what's your favorite uh, uh, type of of uh, construction when you are doing a collage? Um, when doing a collage, I guess my so the way I usually work is. I'll, uh, I'll pull through tons of material, you know, I'll, I'll go on a website, I'll, I'll sometimes have an idea like a location I want or a certain building I want, you know, I love architecture. So I, you know, sometimes we'll single out a certain artist or a, or a certain architect or a certain building or city, but otherwise it's just me scrolling through thousands of images, you know, trying to be ready for that to happen. Um, for me, there's like, for me, there's a, there's magic in when something clicks, you know, when I'm, I'm scrolling through and I'm like, oh, I, I have a file, a terabyte of cats, you know, like on a hard drive, just separate that I'll scroll through and I'll find an, an image or a building and I'll be like, oh, I know a cat that works with that. And it's like, like when that spark happens, like that, that's my favorite thing to just, exactly. you can just feel it growing. You're like, I think it might work, you know, so I like that. Um, another thing, like, kind of adjacent to what you're saying is I also write um, horror screenplays. So that's kind of an outlet that's separate from the art, you know, it's still creating a narrative, but it's more of like a, a non, you know, collage narrative. It's more written word and trying to tell this. Uh, exactly. Story. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, what's your favorite artwork, if you have one? Of mine? Of artwork. yours. Um, man, I, I don't know. I feel like I, I love that when you had Megan Lynn caught on, she had a, she was, she said something about her grandma. That was like her favorite, her grandma's favorite trip was her next trip. And that her favorite artwork was her next artwork. So, I, I feel. Yeah, that that's. I, it's totally yeah yeah like you said that and it resonated because i think you almost have to be that way like the thing you're working on at the moment has to be one of your favorite things mm -hmm. so that you're not kind of playing catch up trying to recreate you know uh something you did in the past you know it's like just be in the moment focus on this make this your priority so i don't know of mine you know um do you have a real life situation that inspired you to a collage? Uh, um, you know, I think about, I say this sometimes when people ask about cats, that um, it, it can't, they, you know, kind of stalk the house and like find a, having trouble? Can you hear me? Okay. A little bit. It's just like when, a little bit. When they would find of a, Delay is there's a, like a delay on on the when you're talking. I can see your lips moving and then a little bit of sound. I feel like I'm getting I get the same thing. They're fine. Um, is that any better? Mm -hmm. That's better. Any better? Mm -hmm. No. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, it is. So it I feel is. like a, a, a real. Okay. A real life situation with like my cats in using them. This was kind of one of the initial ideas for using, like making really big cats in pieces was the difference between, you know, me holding my cat and it's, it's like all small and me. And then when there's a, a ladybug in the house and it's just like going nuts and chasing that, <laughs> um, how does, how does our cuddly cat look to that ladybug? And it's this like, like terrifying, monster you know learn so i feel like a hunter that was one of the yeah. initial like things for trying to do like the giant cat pieces yeah you know and cuddly with us but they're these fierce they're huge hunters you know, yeah of course with, um with totally, totally with other predators. Predators. it's just like wow yeah uh, okay, uh, I know you do research because you said you had some pages uh, with uh, uh, co uh, free copywriting uh, images. And uh, do you have a dream project? 
Can you listen to me? A dream project. Um, yeah, a listen. I, yeah, a dream yeah, project I, or a goal. Yeah. Um, I would say um, I want to do something really big. I would love to do, you know, one of my pieces, like, have it blown up to, like, billboard size. I think that would be really cool. Um, it would be. Building size. I've always loved, like, the, you know, hand-painted um, advertisements on buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, something of mine that scale. And I think it's usually because I work so small. Um, it would be kind of out of my comfort zone. But seeing something really big would be cool. Oh, that would be very, very cool. Yeah. Of course. And I'd love, to, I'd love to have a book someday. You know, just to you have to a lot of work in one place, I think would be. But you have to, you have to do that. Yeah. Because it's, sure. it's just book uh, material. Uh, tell us about your animal companions. Um, he, he's, he's missing at the moment. He's probably eating. Of course. But we, we have a cat, Atticus. Um, we lost uh, one of our cats, Sherlock, last April, you know, but they were, they were our boys. But Atticus is, you know, he's 15. So he's an old guy. He's a he's a cuddler. Um, he's really just the best, you know. He's on. Yeah, senior, cat. senior yeah. cats, senior cats are just incredible. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it's like he went. Through, he still gets the little bit of crazies, you know. But he's mainly just just chill, you know. Yeah, <laughs> totally chill. Yeah. Uh, and uh, okay, favorite uh, famous cat or fictional, uh, real or fictional. And why? That, that's a hard one. Um, I, I was thinking about this. I think it's, I think it's Hobbes from the Catholic I'm, Hobbes. I'm sorry. It says, oh, yeah. Jackie uh, Vigito says, yes, I'd love to see one of Matt's pieces billboard size. Yes. Thank yes, you. we are. And <laughs> uh, Jackie said, uh, a terabyte of cats. <laughs> That's funny, but yeah, billboard. I'm sorry, interrupted you. <laughs> okay, uh, so a famous cat, yes, uh, yeah. Oh, no. yeah. I would say, um, yeah, from like the Calvin and Hobbes comics. Oh yeah, it's was always a big one for me. Um, yeah, I was Hobbes. Yeah, an only child, like Calvin. So you know, like my stuffed animals were always Calvin and Hobbes. You know, they were like my companion. And of I think course, having yeah. a partner like that to live in the film. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where it's I'm adding this one, uh, I'm adding this one and uh, for artists now is like, where uh, can people purchase your art? Do you have a Etsy shop? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's starting. I have, an I have no shop. idea why. Uh, if you search okay. Mr. McCarthy or there's a link in my bio. Yeah. Okay. No. I'll write that down. Oh no. Oh no. It always it looks fun. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Next year or this year actually, 2021. I have a a puzzle coming out with Gallison. Um, wow, that's great. Yeah, it's going to be nice. It's going to be a really big one. It's going to be cats from all over the world. Like cats on vacation was kind of the theme. So um, they're going to be publishing that. That'll be exciting. I think that's in June, maybe May or June. Mm -hmm. Good to take on vacation. Um, but yeah, I, I usually do updates to my shop pretty regularly. And then I have a, a um, um, I'm going to do a, I have a bunch of new stickers coming this month perfect which will be that's great fun. i think people will like them some uh, holographic stickers sure. and cool oh yeah the, do you have an astronaut that's super cool holographic astronaut cat astronaut space cat right yeah that's the one awesome super cool super cool stickers you have to get them well, Matt, it has been a pleasure. Uh, um, you know, the, yeah. the, I don't know why the connection I love these been rainbow that ones. Good. They're so cool. Yeah. Uh, the mm -hmm. connection wasn't great, but uh, we can just uh, uh, fill Thanks. out whatever was missed. I can just text it or something on, on the uh, comments. But I think pretty much people could understand what you were saying. So 
and could bear with my and could bear with my accent. So <laughs> that's a, that's success. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Matt. Keep on doing art. Uh, I love it yeah. and have fun. Thank you I for so. accepting <laughs> me. Huh? <laughs> Great. <laughs>